All right, how you guys doing? Sunspot living, wonderful experience. Hope I can get this in shortly. This is the Real Trends Market Report uh, for this week. Today is uh, October 23rd. Let's go through the list and see what we got right here. All right. Of course, you know, uh, if you haven't heard um, that the interest rates have risen to uh, 6.53, which is still a, con- a good amount, a considerable amount for um, a good deal if uh, interest rates are something that's, you know, a concern of yours. We look right here on the real market index, which they use here, and they show that it's in the buyer's market uh, arena, which is very good. Can I get a... Here we go. Uh, get an applause for that. Be, that's really good. Yeah. Okay. When you see that that, that gauge, 34, uh, last week was on 43. Okay. It said, oh, this is less than the last month's market action index of 40, 49. And the inventory has decreased by 25. There's been a lot of movement. The median list price of the uh, home in New York, 8250000 Median price of new listings, $7,200,000. Uh, 200, pardon me. Um, per square foot, $1,714. Dollars average days on the market, which is very important. More uh, a high number of days on the market, you know, can prove less desirability in that property. Always remember that. And average days on the market in New York City, uh, one hundred and eighty-seven. Okay, one hundred eighty-seven days on the market. Median days on the market is one hundred and nineteen. Just skip down to those that are renters for the renters out there. The average median rent, 5108 Now, with the upcoming elections and uh, the new processes going into effect, uh, even with the, the new push by city council, you know, we can see these things start to change in the next uh, six months. But still... Do your due diligence. Make sure you have your, your clean credit report. Make sure you get your, your credit report, annualcreditreport.com. You get one a year and make sure that you, you have enough money to move around. Market conditions have been consistently cooling in the past several weeks because we're still in the seller zone. Prices have not yet begun to drop. It may take a few more weeks of slack demand for prices to reflect and begin to fall. Expect prices to fall if the index persistently uh, falls to the buyer zone. So it's still not out of the clear yet for the buyer's market. Like it basically tipping the st- scale about to go into that, but you know, it, it's looking pretty good. Then you see the market action down 34. Let's go into um, one more thing that, I liked, and this was a article here on the lighter side. This is concerning when you need to sell your house before buying another, which is usually, you know, what goes down in um, New York City, New Jersey, um, most of the eastern states. Um, you know, we can also have what you call a, 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 a dual agent type of thing where the same agent finds you something while you're selling your, your property. So, you know, that can, you know, come into play as a factor. And for you to be a homeowner, you got to know where you're going to go after that. Maybe you're moving far. That same uh, representative, that same agent could probably help you with, with something. You know, if you, if you tap into their resources, into their database, it might have something that you didn't expect, you know, didn't expect before. So you want to make sure you consider that. But what if I find a house? Uh, if I don't find a house I want to buy, right? And this is where spreading your net comes into, you know, um, into, into high regard, you know, depending on how many resources you have, who you can tap into and, um, you never know what ha- you know somebody has in their pocket as far as an exclusive or an off-market 
uh, property. Okay, being concerned that you don't find a house that you like, it's a legitimate concern. You know, unfortunately, waiting till it's your house until your dream house appears on the market isn't a recipe for success. So, you know, the best approach is to have your agent show you the, the data for recent home sales and help you analyze if that's what you're looking for. It is something you can reasonably expect and find it in your price range. You know why your price or your, your, your um initial house gets sold. So definitely that. So that that's a key thing right there. You know, and you can always go to lighter side of the uh, real estate, and if you want to um get the whole thing condensed into like one one long a short form report, I'll be happy to do it. If you ask me. You know, what if the specific house I want to buy sells before mine does? The house that you want to buy sells before your house does. Again, going into what's available, what your price point is, your time frame. You got to be very cognizant of your time frame between when you're going to be able to actively sell your house when you get to the closing in comparison to when you're able to buy and put money on the next house that you're going into and make sure you you have your lenders in effect. You've done your home inspections, the um, the appraisals you've talked to, you know, your legal counsel, if you have to all the above, right? As mentioned, uh, falling head over hills of a house before your current home is even ready to be listed can cost you money and heartache. Always remember that. Let's skip down. If you choose to go this route, best approach is to price your house aggressively. This way is key to have a strong agent and broker. Very key. You know, and um, you could do it yourself, right? But chances are you're, you're not going to have as many resources, uh, negotiating power, because representation is negotiating power. Definitely. When you have a great rest representation. So the first thing that we're asked as an agent is, what would you like your agent to do for you? You know, that uh, um, would give you an advantage in the selling and the buying of this property. So we, we try to position ourselves in the, the best possible angle with all the information to make sure that it's facilitated. We sure we get we get to where we need to go as quickly as possible. Remember that 187 days can be a killer. You know, if we're not careful. So you want to make the most attractive deal as possible. Hope you can get yours under contract before the one you love, the one you love is. Well, you can try to make an offer contingent upon the sale of your house. Um, there's also 1031s that are out there. Just be aware that many sellers aren't too keen on accepting a contingent offer. Right? Many people just want the money. Just want to be able to transfer that money, get into the escrow, move on to something, something different. So be aware of that. I'm going to go quickly. What if I get stuck with two mortgages? Come on. Nobody wants to do that. That's terrible. Stuck with two mortgages. I'll give them the horn. That's, that's insane. Some people can handle paying two mortgages. Now, let me ask, let me uh, uh, um, give you this too is wiser to wait until your second property refinance that before you buy another property. All right. We're going to get into details on that on in, in a, a short form video, you know, next time I have it for you. Okay. Some people can handle paying two mortgages for at least a little while, but even if you can, it's probably something you like to avoid. And this is that overlapping of, you buying a house and selling a house and you haven't closed on your house yet. Okay. To avoid this, don't go in the contract to purchase a home until yours is under contract and all of the contingencies have been met by your buyer. Wise, wise stuff right there. Okay. What if I sell too soon and the market changes? Now this goes into the days on the market and also the 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 drastic changes 
that the market could go under. You can catch it in a good space or it can, you know, really veer off and, you know, wind up costing you more than what you was thinking about paying for thousands and thousands of dollars more. So this is very, very key to have some knowledgeable people that know about the market that can keep up with it. So that's why I go to the market report first. All right. Let's get to this. Is, is it possible? Sure, it is likely. The real estate market usually isn't as volatile as the stock market. Of course, your house could be worth a lot more in the future, but if you wait long enough, okay? But waiting a few weeks or a few months or even a year probably won't line your pockets with that much more cash. This is where, again, an agent or a broker that is very cognizant of how the market is moving at the particular time and, and keeps track of it can save you thousands. Okay. Cause you know, we, we have daily things that we have to do, especially if we still have a job or, you know, a business that we're running. You want to make sure that somebody else is on top of that. And, um, that can award you some extra time, you know, looking for more stuff or, you know, rearranging what you're doing. You know, where will I live if my house sells and I haven't found a closed on a home I want to buy? That's interesting. That's very interesting. Yeah, thank you for the, uh, uh, you know, the nice uh, sound effects. And now I live nowhere. Great. The idea of selling your home and being left with no place to call your home can be terrifying. You know, you're in the limbo world. You know, you don't want to pay, um, another thousands of dollars staying in a hotel. You know, the good news is you got options. Sometimes the best option is crashing with family, but you can always um, afford to do that. And, you know, when if you're at a place where you don't have, you know, too many family members around, right? You can also find short term rentals in between time or stay in a hotel. Airbnb is another one, you know, and those, those markets are starting to change up as, as uh, a little as well. So we got to be, um, very forthcoming with our information as well as, you know, very knowledgeable about what's going on around us, you know, but you might not be able to do it or it might be overbooked or we don't know. These are things we have to settle before you get to that closing uh, table. You can also try and negotiate with the buyer of your house to give you a little more flexible closing date, right? Make the sale contingent on you finding a house to buy. Make sure that's in, in effect. Okay, so that's number five. Those are the five. I'm going to put together a more um, concise narrative form. You know, and I definitely love the brighter side. I hope each and one of you are doing well, especially around the season while we're trans, you know, transitioning into, you know, our, our basically home steady season, right? So we're going to have more events at home. We're going to have a lot more family uh, festivities, you know, and definitely more pump pumpkin spice everywhere, right? <laughs> I wish you and yours well. Talk to you soon. Make sure you check out the next Sunspot Living reports and use the keys of our communication to open doors of better opportunities. Be well.